As my last vlog on why I don't vlog got me a couple of subscribers and a number of comments, I've decided to keep it going. It's going to be entirely whenever I feel like it. It's probably going to be with very little editing, very little scheduling, very little anything, just me rambling on about what I feel like. Although I reserve the right to change all of that and come up with a highly structured, highly polished product if I feel like it. Now, the thing that struck me this morning while I was reading the newspapers was a group letter from a number of British Muslims and organisations for British Muslims condemning the group of people sweeping their way through Iraq and the Levant by saying that the media shouldn't call them Islamic State because they're not Islamic. Now, this interested me on two grounds. Ground number one, that one of the most common insults directed at the moderate Muslim community is that they never actually condemn the terrorists. So it interested me to see that the British Muslim community is saying this is not how Muslims act. We're not a religion of terror, so terrorists aren't Muslims. So hopefully that will help deal with the ordinary people living ordinary lawful lives who happen to be Muslims getting attacked in the street issue, or at least weaken it slightly. The second thing that interested me was that it demonstrates the power of names. They call themselves Islamic State, Islamic State of... Iraq and Syria, Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. Various other people call them various other things. But this isn't a battle so much about whether ISIS, ISIL, IS, whatever, are the same as the Association of Muslim Lawyers. It's at the fact that if you call something Islamic, it tars all of the other things with the same name. So it indicates just how powerful labels are for things. Because we don't go behind the label, we just go, it's Islamic, it's all the same. So, <sighs> what did intrigue me is that Organisations who should be as aware of the power of labels as I am came up with the correct label being the un-Islamic state, which is intriguing to me on two levels. Firstly, it still contains the word Islamic. The human brain is very bad at modifiers. If you say don't do this, your unconscious just hears the verb, do this. So if you're actually trying to restructure a situation mentally, it's better to come up with a positive way of stating the behaviour you want to do, the associations you want to have, rather than stating something purely in terms of its negative state and that's whilst that is something that obviously appears in a number of religions and new age philosophies it's also solid psychology so it seems to be part of us whatever our belief systems are the second thing that interested me is that they weren't attacking the word state no one seems to be attacking the word state, saying that they should be labelled something else because they're not a state. And if you look at the history of the United States' political approach to many situations, one of the common things they and other countries do is deny that a particular group that happens to have a physical majority in a country are actually the legitimate government. They'll deal with governments in exile. They'll refuse to recognise that a country exists. But for some reason, 
everyone is continuing on with the idea that whatever we call the people in the Levant and Iraq who are rampaging around with guns, we call them a state. So I'm unsure whether this is just because they're trying to avoid further unnecessary complexity in labelling, having got tied up in the, well, are they the Levant or does Al-Sham translate as something else? Or whether this actually represents the beginnings of a wider geopolitical force that recognises that the government of a country can be radically opposed to your philosophies without automatically ceasing to be a valid government. Not sure which one is more likely, but it's just something to think about. Oh, and um, I've been asked what the thing behind me is. So it's a wall. Toodaloo.